in cyanosis cyano means blue and oses means increased so the cyanosis refers to the bluish discoloration of the skin and mainly in the areas of the superficial vessels so where will we be looking for this bluish discoloration is we can look it over the nose tip or we can look it over the lips we can look for it over the tongue we can look it over the buccal mucosa or the ear lobes or the fingertips and now what can be the different causes of the bluish discoloration anything blue in the blood can lead to this discoloration which can be deoxyhemoglobin can be methemoglobin can be self hemoglobin and can also occur due to some drugs or metals <clears throat> so if the deoxyhemoglobin is more than 5 g percent methemoglobin more than 1.5 g percent self hemoglobin more than 0.5 g percent this is known as cyanosis whereas if the metals like gold or silver or the drugs like amiodarone or minocycline are causing blue discoloration it is referred to as pseudo cyanosis but you should remember that the main cause and the most common cause of blue discoloration is always deoxyhemoglobin now there can be various causes for deoxyhemoglobin starting from decreased oxygen in the air like it can occur at a higher altitude due to decreased partial pressure of oxygen at high altitude or it can occur due to various airway causes that can lead to decreased o2 entering the blood like if there is obstruction of the upper airway like in case of obstructed sleep apnea or the epiglottitis or it can occur in the obstruction of the lower airway like severe acute exacerbation of asthma or copd or it can occur due to pathology in the alveolar itself like in pneumonia or ards in all these cases the less oxygen will be entering the blood and it will lead to increased deoxyhemoglobin similarly if the airway is normal but the blood flow is abnormal in that case also there can be decreased uh, oxygenation of the hemoglobin which can occur either in the cyanotic heart diseases or the acyanotic heart disease with the eisenmengerization or it can also occur in the congestive heart failure whereas there can be local causes of the cyanosis also like if in a limb only there is involvement of the uh, local blood vessel in that case also cyanosis can be present like let's say there is right upper limb and there is obstruction or vasospasm of the blood vessel of the right upper limb what will happen is due to obstruction of vasospasm there will be decreased blood to the tissues so the decreased blood will reach to the tissues so the decreased oxygen will be present in the tissues so the tissue will try to extract more oxygen from the already present hemoglobin so it will also lead to increased deoxyhemoglobin and it can occurs like obstruction can occur in cases like peripheral artery disease or it can occur due to in embolus or it can occur due to hyperviscosity syndromes whereas the vasospasm can occur due to renorts and as well as due to congestive heart failure so these are also some causes which can lead to cyanosis so if the cyanosis occurring due to central causes like the airway of the heart we call it as central cyanosis whereas if it occur if it is occurring due to some peripheral causes like local blood vessel involvement of the region we call it as peripheral cyanosis and you must remember that in case of congestive heart failure there is both central and peripheral cyanosis why because as the heart is not functioning properly the blood flow is abnormal so the blood reaching the pulmonary capillaries is less so the oxygenation will be less also as the heart is working less there will be pulmonary edema leading to decreased oxygenation so these will lead to the central cyanosis whereas as there is decreased blood to the organs the sympathetic stimulation occurs leading to vasospasm of the vessels of the different regions and it can also lead to cyanosis so in case of chf there is both central and peripheral cyanosis present okay so now if a patient comes to you with a bluish discoloration of eye skin there can be differentials like increased deoxy or methoglobin or cyanoglobin in which the main differential for us will be the increased deoxyglobin and for it we have learned that there can be two causes either it can be due to central cyanosis or it can be due to peripheral cyanosis now based on examination we can easily differentiate whether it is central or peripheral how we can differentiate is one based on the location like if the discoloration is present over the lips buccal mucosa or the nose tip then it is central whereas if it is over the ear lobes the fingertips or it is circumoral then it is peripheral 
next thing which what we can do is we can check for the extremities if the extremities are warm then it is probably uh, central whereas if the extremities are cool then it is probably peripheral why in case of central cyanosis the extremities are warm because as the decreased oxygen is being transferred to the tissues there will be increased lactate and this lactate will lead to reflex vasodilation so this will lead to warm extremities whereas in the peripheral cyanosis the cyanosis occurring is due to vasospasm itself so there will be decreased blood flow and it will lead to cool cool extremities similarly there will uh, if we try to uh, massage the extremities in that case there will be no change in the central cyanosis whereas there will be cyanosis decreased in case of peripheral cyanosis because on massaging the vasospasm will now convert into vasodilation and now the cyanosis will be relieved and also the clubbing and polycythemia are usually more associated in the central cyanosis whereas there are usually not associated in the peripheral cyanosis and if we give oxygen to the patient the cyanosis will be decreased in case of a central cause whereas it will persist in case of a peripheral cause so this is how you can differentiate between central and peripheral cyanosis now some important point that you should know is one is that it is always the absolute amount rather than the relative quantity of the deoxygenated hemoglobin that leads to cyanosis that is the amount should always be more than 5 gram percent to cause cyanosis so if a, if we have a patient of severe anemia in which the hemoglobin is usually less than 5 to 6 in that case there will be less chances of cyanosis as the hemoglobin is not enough to cause cyanosis whereas in case of polycythemia there are high chances of uh, cyanosis occurring as there is increased hemoglobin present so there are more chances that the more than 5 gram percent becomes deoxygenated and in a polycythemia patient we get a characteristic type of cyanosis in which we get reddish coloration of the proximal part of the fingers due to polycythemia whereas the distal ends get are blue due to cyanosis so this is known as ruddy cyanosis which is present in case of a polycythemia now <coughs> two three more important thing that you should know is differential cyanosis reverse differential cyanosis and one is 3 by 4 cyanosis differential cyanosis means that the patient's upper limbs are normal whereas the lower extremities are cyanosed so this occurs in case of patent ductus arteriosus with eisenmangerization is what happens in patent ductus arteriosus is there is a direct connection between the pulmonary artery and the descending aorta distal to the branch of left subclavian artery so what happens is through the aorta the right subclavian artery and the left subclavian artery getting the oxygenated blood thus the upper limbs are normal whereas as the pulmonary artery has deoxygenated blood this deoxygenated blood will go to the lower extremities and so the lower extremities will be cyanosed and what happens in reverse differential cyanosis the upper limb are cyanosed whereas the lower limb are normal and it occurs in cases of patent ductus arteriosus with eisenmangerization with transposition of great vessels now what happens due to transposition of great vessels here there will be aorta and then here will be the pulmonary artery so now aorta will be giving the oxygenated blood to the lower part of the body whereas the pulmonary artery will be giving deoxygenated blood to the upper part of the body so in this case the lower limbs will be normal whereas the upper limbs will be cyanosed and the 3 by 4 cyanosis refers to the cyanosis in 3 out of 4 limbs which occurs when the patent ductus arteriosus is proximal to the left subclavian artery okay like if the pulmonary artery is connecting to the arch of aorta proximal to the left sub subclavian artery what will happen is the aorta will give oxygenated blood to the right subclavian artery to the uh, right upper limb whereas there will be deoxygenated blood going both to the left upper limb as well as the lower limb so this is the 3 by 4 sinuses